So Game Porting Toolkit 2 has unleashed a whole new world of Windows Mac gaming. Not only have they brought us general improvements to D3D Metal, which is Apple's graphics translation layer, which allows the Windows DirectX 11 and 12 games to run on Apple Silicon hardware, they've also given us the ability to run AVX titles. This means that many previously unplayable games that required the AVX CPU instruction set can now actually be played on the Apple Silicon Mac. So today I'm going to give you a showcase of some of the best new games that you can now play through Game Porting Toolkit 2.0. And yes, I'm fully aware that I'm running these games on the highest end M3 Max chip. Once I have more time, I'll definitely be doing comparisons with the base M1 MacBook Air as well. If you want to find out how to actually run these games, then I've got my previous video, which is a video tutorial on how to get these running through crossover. Make sure to check the link in the description. So here we're starting off with Senua's Saga Hellblade 2, and this is easily one of the best graphics I've ever seen in a video game. Now in my initial game porting toolkit 2 video, I commented about how the first entry in this series, Hellblade Senua's Saga, now supported ray tracing and could be run on M3 chips. However, its sequel being played here does not support hardware ray tracing, instead it uses software lighting to mimic ray tracing to achieve very realistic lighting and shadows. Now I'm running the game here at 1080p at medium graphics settings. We also have upscaling implemented in the form of FSR version 3 set to quality mode. Now performance isn't perfect with stuttering here and there, but overall you can see it's a very playable experience. And it's great to see that such a high profile AAA title, which only released last month, is now completely playable on Apple Silicon hardware and is very enjoyable as well. Next up, we are looking at the game Trackmania. So this is one of the most requested titles to be run on the Apple Silicon Mac. And it's not a particularly demanding game, so it's been a bit of a mystery why this hasn't been working. However, with the release of Game Porting Toolkit version 2, we can now run this pretty much flawlessly. So I'm testing the game at 1080p, and it's pretty much running on default settings, which I believe are the highest graphics settings as well. And we're getting a very respectable 100 to 150 FPS, which is really quite important for a game like this, where you're constantly trying to compete and beat your last score. Now, I think more important than frame rate is basically the lack of any kind of stuttering, which is basically much more likely to affect your ability to play the game. And I'm glad to see that Game Porting Toolkit 2 is making improvements not just in big AAA titles with AVX requirements, but also older titles too, which are still very popular. And these kind of games really suit the Apple Silicon lineup because they are more low end. Anyway, great to see that this game was playable. I could use a control controller and it ran fine through Ubisoft Connect through crossover. Next up, we are looking at Far Cry 6. So this is a game I could actually run before on crossover version 24 with D3D Metal version 1.1. However, we had several issues with artifact in lighting. So it was pretty much not very enjoyable to play because you'd get blinded by certain lights on screen. But we can see generalized improvements in all of the rendering. And it also feels like it's a smoother experience as well. I'm gonna be doing more in-depth testing, comparing game porting toolkit version 1.1 and 2.0 in the near future. So you can see that these open world Ubisoft games are actually performing really well using this new version of Game Porting Toolkit. We're running the game at 1080p at the high graphics preset using DirectX 12. And on average, we're getting a frame rate of around 70 to 100 plus. Now there are stutters here and there. These are due to shader compilation. But despite this, I still call this a very playable experience on the Apple Silicon Mac. So here we're running Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. So I featured this game before it is one of the breakout hits which requires AVX in order to run and thanks to Game Porting Toolkit 2.0 Beta 1 it actually works. We need to actually run this on macOS Sequoia because it's only there where the Rosetta 2 AVX fixes are located. So here we're running the game at 1080p at default graphics settings with AMD FSR set to quality mode so that's upscaling. Here I'm easily playing with a controller and it's pretty much a flawless experience. Barely any kind of stutters and and it's quick to boot up and it's quick to play. Now, unfortunately, we haven't had that much more luck with other Sony titles, which also require AVX, for example, Ghost of Tsushima or games like Uncharted or The Last of Us. However, it was really good to see that these AVX requirements are no longer the issue. There are other problems which are blocking those games from being launched on macOS through crossover, which I'm sure people are gonna find out how to fix over the coming months. So the next game that we're looking at is Hi-Fi Rush, the third person action rhythm game. Now, this is a Windows title from Bethesda, using Unreal Engine 4. 
We're running the game here at 1080p at high graphics settings. And personally, I'm not 100% sure that the frame rate is actually reaching 200 plus. However, the game does feel smooth and playable. There's minimal amounts of stutter, which is really important because a lot of the combos in this game are rhythm based and trying to match the attacks with the beat of the music. And it's good to see that this is working because Game Porting Toolkit version 1 and 1.1 couldn't actually boot this game past the startup screen. Something in the magic of Game Porting Toolkit 2 and D3D Metal is making this now work. And this is really good because this is one of those sleeper hit double A titles from 2023, which is now working well on Apple Silicon hardware. So the next game we're looking at is Hitman World of Assassination, aka Hitman 3. So we've had a real history of trying to get Hitman and Hitman 2 running through crossover on the M1 chip in the past. However, all thanks to Apple's efforts developing D3D Metal and Game Porting Toolkit 2, this is now pretty much working flawlessly on the Mac. Again, I can't really trust the frame rate counter of Metal HUD all of the time, but it does feel extremely smooth. We're basically running this game at 1080p on the default graphics settings. It looks pretty gorgeous and despite the fact that we have dozens even hundreds of characters on the screen at once, we're still getting extremely good frame rates and minimal stutter. So personally I'm pretty terrible at stealth games but I do enjoy the Hitman series in general. There's a huge amount of content available to play especially because you can basically import levels from Hitman 1 and 2 into the Hitman world of assassination and this is a really welcome turn of events because the original Hitman 1 from 2016 did have a Mac port but it was basically unsupported. When Hitman 2 came out we could run it through crossover but with major graphical issues. But now we've come full circle and we can basically play all of those campaigns and more on the Apple Silicon Mac. So lastly we're going to be looking at Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Origins. So Ubisoft games have featured heavily in this list so far. Maybe it's coincidence that all of these Ubisoft open world titles are now playable through this method. Or perhaps game Porting toolkit development work on upcoming titles like Assassin's Creed Shadows and the recently released to iPad and iPhone Assassin's Creed Mirage have now come their way to D3D Metal as well. Anyway, it's great to see that many more Assassin's Creed and Far Cry titles are actually coming to compatibility on the Mac, especially as these are extremely popular AAA series of games. So here I'm running the Steam version of the game in an Ubisoft Connect bottle. So I had a couple of issues trying to get this to run through my Steam bottle. If I wanted to play the Steam version, it was actually easier to create an Ubisoft Connect Windows 7 bottle and then install Steam into there in order to get this to work. The results speak for themselves, they are fantastic. There is some minimal shader compilation stutter, despite the fact that we're running on relatively modest 1080p at high graphics settings. So lastly, we're going to be looking at Assassin's Creed Origins. And despite the fact that this is actually older than Odyssey and uses the exact same game engine, unfortunately the game doesn't seem to perform as smoothly. I know that the metal HUD in the top right hand corner is showing unbelievable frame rates. However, in actual experience, it felt like there were a lot of tiny stutters. And although some parts of this beginning part of the game felt relatively smooth, something just feels a little bit off with the game performance through Game Porting Toolkit 2. Anyway, I'm sure that these issues could be fixed eventually, especially given that we're only a couple of days into Game Porting Toolkit 2's release. In fact, it's even less than 48 hours since this was announced to the public. And I'm sure that over the coming months, people are going to get their hands on this and help to improve this over time, the future of Mac gaming is looking brighter than ever. Anyway, I hope you found this comparison video interesting. Yes, I will be looking at lower end M1 Apple Silicon Mac chips in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.